Hi everybody, welcome to another video here on my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a video based off of a lesson I've just done with a student which is all about following the sat-nav. So what I'm going to be showing you will be what the sat-nav screen is going to look like, how you should be following the instructions, and what you should be looking at when you're getting the instructions and when you're going to get the instructions. So let's get into the video. Okay, so first of all, on your driving test, four out of five of them are going to be using SatNav for the independent drive. Um, so what they're going to do is they have a pre-programmed SatNav and they use the TomTom Tom Start 52. It's a specific model that they use which has got some pre-recorded routes on it. So you don't have to program the SatNav yourself. The route itself is already pre-programmed. So all they're going to do is they're going to put it up on the dashboard and either at the beginning of the test, halfway through the test, at some point during the test, they're going to say to you, right, I'd now like you to do your independent drive following the instructions from the sat-nav for me. And they'll press the buttons and all you've got to do is follow it as if you're following their instructions. The following clips that you're going to see and the bits you're going to see on screen are what the sat-nav screen is going to look like and what it looks like for my student going forwards looking out the front window when they're getting these instructions so you can kind of see where the instructions are coming and how you should be following them so here it is guys you can see you've got the dash cam footage in the main part of the screen and then up in the top left hand corner is the screen from the sat nav now the screen that i'm using on this is from the tom tom go app um, as it's the easiest way to record the screen for you After 100 yards, turn right. So there we've had our first instruction, which is our pre-warning instruction. Turn right. And then just as we get into the junction, the sat-nav is repeating the instruction so that we know where we are. Now that first instruction is going to come at you at different times. It all depends on how fast you are going. The quicker you're going, the earlier that first instruction is going to be read out to you. Now we've got another instruction coming up in a second because we're going a little bit quicker, so it's going to do it earlier. After 200 yards, turn right. So I now know I'm turning to the right and I'm looking for my road on the right, so I know where I'm going to be turning. As I'm approaching the junction, start to get the signal on, and then just as you can see here, turn right. There is a no entry or a road close sign there, so I'm going to have to ignore the sat nav and force it to take me around a different way. Turn right. It does that quite quickly, picking up this next road on the right. That's exactly what the examiner is going to expect you to do on your test, is if you've come across a road that is closed, don't just go down it because the sat-nav tells you to. F keep going straight and it will find an alternative route for you, or the examiner will do. At the end of the road, turn left. So that's my pre-warning instruction that I'm coming to an end of a road, so I'm looking for it and getting my signal on. Turn left. So we're now out onto a main road. I've not had any instruction for anywhere to turn. So I'm just now going to follow the road ahead, driving as I would do normally, keeping myself nice and safe, being very observant to what's going on, and not just blindly following the sat-nav as if I've got my eyes shut and I'm not really paying attention to what's going on around me. You can see at the top screen of the sat-nav, it's got like a countdown of how far you are away from the next instruction. And you can just about see at the top of the screen where the arrow is. So I know that I'm not turning for a little bit yet, but it is going to be coming up. So I'm just listening out for that next instruction. After 300 yards, turn right. And there we go, so we've had our instructions, so we now know we need to turn right. Little cast your eyes up to the screen, you can see that I'm just about to pass the last road before it. Signal goes on, I'm then looking at my junction to see where I need to turn. Turn right. Into the correct lane after the instruction, and then I wait for my opportunity to go. And around we go. 
so again we've now got no instruction as which to turn and if you look at the screen you can see there isn't any um, white arrows on the blue marking because the blue marking is what you are following so all I'm going to do is just follow the road ahead until I'm instructed to otherwise the key is, is here is to make sure that you maintain being safe and observant the whole time you're doing this it's just like following instructions from an instructor or from the examiner it's just the fact that it's a computer giving you them rather than a human being so another important point to note out here is if you look at the bottom of the screen it shows you what the speed limit is and what speed you are doing your speed is taken from the GPS signal from the sat nav the speed limits, however, are as accurate as the information that has been given to it, so do not rely on them whilst you're on your test. After 800 yards, turn left. Okay, so we've had a bit of an earlier instruction there. It's because the sat-nav is well aware that the speed limit for this road is a little bit higher than what you've done before, and it wants to give you plenty of information as early as it possibly can do. You can now also see the white arrow on the top of your screen. After 300 yards, turn left, then go around the roundabout, second exit. Okay, so as we're approaching the roundabout, you may have noticed it's given us two instructions. It's asked us to turn left and then go around the roundabout, second exit. If you look at the screen here, you can see we've got a white arrow taking us to the left and then very close after it is a roundabout. So it gives you the instructions nice and early so that you can get yourself planned and you know what you're doing because it might not have time to give you both instructions there as you're going around this first corner to the left that's very close to the next junction so it wants to give it you nice and early so that it doesn't overload you go around the roundabout second exit it also helps you with planning so if you're going to a junction and it says to you at the end of the road turn right then take the first road on the right you know that if it's two lanes you need to be coming round into that right hand lane so it's all there to help you plan and prepare what you're doing so again we're on a road like this it's 30 mile an hour road your carriageway there's no instructions at all i can't see anything on the map that shows me that i'm going to have to be turning soon what it does show me at the top of the screen is i'm at the next roundabout i come to which is in 700 yards, I will be turning left. So I know that I'm going to be turning left shortly and I can look at the road, keep following it nice and safely, always having that in the side of my mind that I'm going to be turning left soon. So whatever happens, that's my next instruction coming up. As we get close to that roundabout, the next instruction is going to come up. After 300 yards, go around the roundabout, first exit. And then as that instruction's there, as well as dealing with the bus and the other traffic and the traffic lights I've got coming up, I'm looking at the roundabout now, thinking about which way I'm going to have to travel at the roundabout. Go around the roundabout, first exit. So I've now had all my instructions, I've checked with the map as I'm coming to a stop because I've got a perfect opportunity here to have a look at the sat-nav screen and make sure that I'm happy I know where I'm going. I'm in the correct lane, correct signals on, if necessary, I'm just waiting for the lights to change. And just as you would do on any other roundabout, I'm now in my lane, so I'm just going to follow where this lane takes me for now. Keeping a good eye on the new speed limit signs I've just gone through and the traffic in front of me. Again, progressing as you would do safely, just because you're following sat-nav doesn't mean you just sit behind another car if it's doing 20 mile an hour in a 40. If you can get up to speed and safely overtake them, then do it. Follow the road as you would do normally. And you can see up here we've got quite a long way. It says one and a quarter miles until my next instruction. 
until my next junction that I'm going to have to follow. It's now updated that because I've got a little bit closer, showing me that it's going to be a roundabout I'm going to be approaching. So again, I've got in my head here, I'm on a three lane road, so I've got three different lanes that I can choose. I already know because I've had a quick look at the screen that it's going to be a left turn that I'm going to make soon. So unless I'm told otherwise by the road signs, I'm now just going to sit myself in the left lane, unless of course I need to overtake, in which case I'll do so safely, but always having that in the back of my mind that I need to make sure that I get back over to the left lane as soon as I can so that I'm in the position for my next instruction. And now the only other point to notice here is if you can see my speed at the bottom of the screen, I've actually dropped it back a little bit. Because this lorry's come round me, I want to make sure that I can see the driver in his mirrors. If I can see him, he can see me. So if he needs to move over, he knows where I am now. So I've just dropped my speed back a little bit just to give myself a little bit more space to that vehicle in front. Although he's in a different lane, you never know what he might want to do. As it turns out, that driver has moved out into lane number three. But it just allows us as drivers just to give ourselves that little bit more space, that little bit more flexibility, and that little bit more comfort zone so that we can plan for the unexpected. After 400 yards, go around the roundabout, second exit. Okay, so I've had my instruction now, which is telling me to take the second exit. I can see that on the map I've got an exit just to my left as I come around the corner. So I'm looking for my second exit as I approach the roundabout. Go around the roundabout, second exit. At this point here, I can't actually physically see my exit. But what I do know from the signs that I've seen as I've approached, it's the A52 I'm going to be going down. As we come round the corner, look for my first exit which is there, and then I'm taking my second exit which is effectively straight on. Now I'm going to build my speed up through the 40 into the national speed limit, which is 70 miles an hour for this road. And it is a limit, not a target. So I'm going to aim for somewhere in the mid-60s, which gives me enough speed to flow through the traffic and progress nicely without breaking the speed limit. Again, overtaking vehicles that are not quite achieving the speed that they should be achieving for this road. So I'm just going to overtake them and then get myself back over into the left lane because I've got plenty of space to do that. And by looking at the top of the screen on my sat-nav, it shows I've still got half a mile to go. After 800 yards, go around the roundabout, fifth exit. So I've had my next instruction, so I know where I'm going now. I've now got to deal with the 40 mile an hour sign, so I'm slowing the car down here, getting myself down to 40 as I'm changing lanes because I now know I need to be turning right at the roundabout, so I'm trying to get my speed down and change lanes at the same time. Now this is one of those times where the sat-nav is actually incorrect because it has told me fifth exit. Go around the roundabout, fifth exit. And there it is again, it says that I'm going on the fifth exit. Now unfortunately sat-navs are only as good as the information that's provided to them. And it has miscounted one of these exits as being an extra one. So there is actually only four exits to where I can go here. I have the garden centre to my left. There is a, another junction off to the left where that lorry is now. And then a little bit straight in front is junction exit number three and then to my right is exit number four so I'm actually going to be going through exit number four so as I enter the roundabout I'm going to stay in my lane following it round with my correct right hand signal on and just to help me out the sat nav is now going to tell me take the exit 
just so I know that I'm coming off at the correct exit. And a lot of sat navs will do that as you're going around larger roundabouts where you've had multiple exits to deal with. It's going to remind you which exit to come off at. So it's very handy that a lot of them do that. And remember, with all sat navs, they're giving you a pre planned instruction. So the first instruction you get is always going to be a little bit before where you actually need to turn. So that first instruction is not an instruction to say to you, right, turn left now. It's turning left in so many hundred yards. It's your warning that you're going to be turning left, turning right, whichever way it might be, shortly. And then we're not far from the destination now. We've only got a couple of junctions left to deal with. And as we're coming up this road, we're going to receive our next instruction. After 300 yards, turn left. So I now know I'm looking for a road on the left. I'm preparing myself to turn left. At the minute, I can't actually see the road, but I know it's coming up because that is what the sat nav has told me. So I'm preparing myself to make that turn. Turn left. And there I can see the junction, so it's quite hard to see this one, but I already know it's coming because the sat nav has helped me out and told me that. And now for the sat nav independent driving part of your test, it will be between 15 and 20 minutes of your drive. Now this one has been just under 20 minutes, it's about spot on for what we need it to be, but it is going to be about that length on your test. And as you can see, following the instructions themselves are quite simple. You can have a good practice of this on your own, not doing lessons in your own, when you're going out with other people as friends, family members, as a passenger. If you download the TomTom Tom Go app onto your phone, find out where you're travelling to, program the route in yourself, and just watch the screen and watch where you're going and see if you can figure out where it's getting you to go when you sat as a passenger and you're not having to consider what you're doing with your pedals, with your controls, it will give you a real big help of getting used to how the sat nav works, the instructions it gives you, and the types of timing that it gives you for the instructions. I'm just dealing with a little bit of oncoming traffic. It's quite hard to see on the video, but this is actually a really steep hill. So it's handy just to kind of take your time a little bit here. And you can see there's a bit of a blind brow here. So I'm going to take it a little bit slower. After 200 yards, turn left. Okay, so I now know which direction I'm going at the end of the road. And I can see it on the map as well with my little arrow. Turn left. Little reminder as I'm coming to the bottom of the hill here of which direction I'm taking. And you can quite clearly see my exit there is blocked by the bus. So I'm going to have to stop no matter what's coming to my right. As it turns out, there is actually a car coming to the right anyway, which is just there. Let them go nice and safely checked, just as you would do normally. And off you go. And you can actually see on the screen now, my little checkered flag is coming up. So that just shows you where the end of the route is. As you approach the end of this route, the examiner is going to just inform you that you're coming to the end of it. And we're just going to get our final instruction now, which is coming up very shortly. After 300 yards, turn left, then you have reached your destination. And now I know which direction I'm going to get to my destination. And if it is a destination where the examiner wants you to stop, You'll go into the road that we're going to go into in a second. They'd then say to you, right, thank you very much. That's the end of your independent drive. If you'd like to pull up on the left for me, please. Turn left, then you have reached your destination. And then that might be the end of your independent drive where they get you to do another manoeuvre or some sort like that. You have reached your destination. You're then going to have to just go back to following their instructions as you did previously on the test.
Okay, so that's the end of the video, guys. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching. If this is the first time coming to my channel, do make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos coming up. Um, had a little bit of a break over the last couple of weeks because I've been away with the uh, kiddies, but we should be back onto it, giving them out at least once a week now. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. I wish you every success with your driving test and making sure that you stay safe on the road in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.